Hi folks, Lee Packett here, and you're watching Between the Lines, part of Fault Lines' effort to take a look at the cracks in America's criminal justice system. My guest today is Ken White. He's blogger at Pope Hat. We're thrilled to have him join us. Welcome, Ken. Good to see you. Thanks for having me, Lee. Glad to be here. Of course. So you're, uh, you put out an article for us this week uh, at Fault Lines that I thought was uh, a little different from the stuff we normally publish. It's got a little bit of uh, media criticism in it, uh, really interesting stuff. It's about the story of Hildy Kate Lisiak, nine-year-old, nine years old, publisher of Orange Street News uh, in Pennsylvania. Uh, she made the news herself uh, in recent weeks. Uh, she covered um, a grisly homicide that actually happened a couple blocks from her, her house. And uh, she garnered a lot of criticism and praise on the internet uh, for, for covering this story at, at, at such a very young age. Um, found it interesting that so many people had a problem with a nine-year-old reporting on, on local crime. Uh, Ken, what do you make of this story? Well, I think there's a couple of threads intertwined here. One certainly is the uh, increasing uh, bubble we want to put our kids in so that even an extremely bright nine-year-old who has a passion about journalism and could grow up to be a great journalist is treated as someone who, in the words of some of her detractors, ought to be having tea parties with dolls. I think it's great she has something she's passionate about and that she's doing uh, like an adult. Um, and this is sort of the, the free-range kids idea that I talk about in the article, that uh, you know we've, we've allowed ourselves to become terrified for ourselves and our kids. Part of that is the fault of the media and that this sentiment that she shouldn't be exposed to these things is part of that sentiment that uh, goes to you know, protecting kids from we don't really know what. It's interesting. But, I find the whole free range kid phenomenon so interesting because, you know, in today's day and age on the internet, children are exposed to so much more at such an early age than people like you and I ever really were. So you expect the trend almost to go in the other direction, you know, they, that, well, that people would be more okay with kids experiencing more of the world at, at a younger age. You would think so, but we, first of all, most of the parents I know are terrified about the internet and its impact on their kids. And second of all, it's clear that the exposure of our kids to a wider range of things is the opposite of what we do in the real world. Uh, you know, I certainly don't allow my kids to do any number of things that I did in the same neighborhood at the same age. And I'm an advocate for free range kids. Uh, you know, our kids are now safer in any number of ways than they were when we were 9 or 12 or 15. Uh, the crime rate is down. Uh, they're safer from being hit by a car. Uh, they're safer from any number of environmental factors. And yet, because of the way the media treats us as consumers of blood and guts and fear, uh, we see them as being in this mortal danger all the time, more so than we ever were. I find Hildy's story particularly interesting because she's covering uh, local crime. Um, I could imagine a lot of police departments around the country would be thrilled at the idea of a nine-year-old uh, doing the, the crime blotters uh, in their towns. But it was interesting, this Guardian piece that I kind of found as the jumping off point for, for talking about this, um, they point out that local police um, asked professional adult media not to cover this story. And uh, here they have a nine-year-old publishing um, on this. Um, interesting dynamic here, no? What does this story yeah. say about how we cover crime and law in the United States? Well, I loved Hildy's quote about it. She, she mentioned that, that she found out the police were asking people not to report on it. And she said, but, you know, I don't work for them. I work for you, meaning the public. Uh, I guess she's nine, so she doesn't know any better that the media is supposed to be working for the cops in order to get juicy leaks and carefully scripted information, which seems to be the attitude of too much of the grown-up so-called professional media. I think the attitude that she has that uh, you know her, her job is to tell her readers what the truth is, what happened, and not to take at face value what the cops ask for is the right one, the, the one that should be the professional one. Yeah, she's, uh, she's only nine years old, but she's a bit of a throwback, uh, an old-fashioned reporter. Um, well, maybe nine-year-olds have sort of a natural obstinacy and defiance that we need the media to learn again, uh, that it's lost to a certain extent. Ken, you've been uh, a member of the media for a while. You've been practicing law for an even, even longer period of time. When you look at this issue, you know, covering uh, crime, law, 
justice uh, in the media. Um, I would not want to put words in your mouth, but it, it, when I talk to a lot of people, it sounds like it's getting worse year after year. Is that how you see things, or do you see uh, cause for, uh, for optimism out there? Well, the cause for optimism might be that the internet and technology allows a voice to people like Hildy, so that there can be people who are uh, questioning the law enforcement narrative, who are telling stories that won't be told elsewhere. You know, we have a, a culture that for a long time has glorified law enforcement, and there are many good people in law enforcement. Many of them do a good job, and much of it is necessary. But what we need are reporters who don't assume that because a statement is made by law enforcement that it's true, or that because a request don't report on this is made by law enforcement, it's legitimate. You know, we need the spirit of a nine-year-old, in other words. Why? Um, and I think that the modern technology allows that, which is a good thing. I'd like to see more pushback from the political culture, from the mainstream media, so-called, and from professionals against that, though, because I continue to see the sort of um, deference to law enforcement uh, and the willing to the willingness to ignore law enforcement misconduct in favor of other stories. Um, my favorite example of this is something that happened uh, to one of my law partners, to a client of his. Years ago, there was a controversial local politician, and he was indicted, and the DA's investigators showed up at 7 in the morning to arrest him at his home. Um, they tipped off, of course, the LA Times, and the LA Times sent a reporter and a photographer. But being reporters and photographers, they got there late. Uh, so the DA's investigators had already taken this guy out of his house in handcuffs and put him in the back of the car. The reporter and the photographer complained. So the DA investigators took him out of the back of the car, back into his house, wow. and then walked him back out again in front of the camera. <laughs> now, to the Times and to too many professional photographers, the story to be reported here was, here is a picture of a guy in handcuffs being led away. Here is the perp walk. The story wasn't, law enforcement is willing to stage this picture for you, and we're willing to report it. I think the second part is the story. I don't think so much the image of a guy in handcuffs is the story. And I wish more of the media would see that. Looking at this story, you know, I, I saw Hilde, you know, she's a nine-year-old. It talks about how, you know, sometimes younger people can look at the world uh, in a different way from adults. But I also saw, um, you know, a compelling argument for independent journalism. Uh, I, you know, journalism that's not necessarily backed up by a VC fund or large corporate interest. Uh, journalism that's there to do what it's primary purpose is supposed to be, you know, that is tell the truth. Uh, interesting stuff. Ken, Pope, Ken White from Pope Hat, thanks for joining us today. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Lee. That's what we got for this week. If you'd like to see more of the stuff we're working on, be sure to go check us out online at mimesislaw.com under the Fault Lines tab. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. If you're listening to us as a podcast, do us a favor and write us a good review on iTunes. It makes all the difference in the world. If you're watching us on video at YouTube, subscribe to this awesome channel. There's more awesome stuff coming. I can promise you that. I'm Lee Pacquia. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Caveat, Lee, that this is uh, speculation, but I've heard it from uh, three or four what I would call fairly well-informed, highly placed, and reliable sources. Um, they are telling me that this was perhaps not so much a hack as it was a disgruntled mistress of a partner at the law firm.